In today's video, I will talk about the MR anatomy of the hip abductor tendons. To understand the hip abductor tendon insertions, you have to understand the different facets that we have here on the greater trochanter. And first of all, we have here the anterior facet, which is this flattened surface here. And if you move the hip in this direction, you can see that we have another surface or plane here. And then there is the third here on the back. So basically, there are three or four different facets, depending on how you divide them. Here in this color, you have the anterior facet, which is where the gluteus minimus inserts. Now, if we have a lateral view, again, you can see here the anterior facet. And then we have here the lateral facet in the darker green. And up here is the supraposterior facet. And in red, we have the posterior facet. Here is posterior view. And again, we have the posterior facet, the supraposterior facet, and part of the lateral facet. Let's first have a look at the facets here in this example here. We have the femoral head and here we have the anterior facet. Then we have the lateral facet and here we have the supraposterior facet. And down below is the posterior facet where no tendon inserts. This is now a very good time to make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and also make sure you hit this little bell button there because then you get an email every time I upload a new video. And this is very helpful because I plan to do videos about hip abductor tendon pathology that you don't want to miss. So if you get the email you won't miss any episode. So do that right now. And because repetition is the best way to learn stuff, here again the anterior facet. And now in yellow you can see how the tendon actually inserts. So it does not insert onto the whole surface here, but just here on this lateral portion. And if you look at this on an MR scan, it looks something like this on a coronal view. Now let's turn the hip again and we have here the anterior facet now presenting the lateral facet and parts of the posterior and supraposterior facet in the corresponding colors that I have mentioned at the beginning of the video. Oh, now here we have this boomerang shaped insertion of the gluteus minimus and then the two insertions of the gluteus medius tendon, the lateral portion and the supraposterior portion. The supraposterior portion is inserting onto the supraposterior facet while the other one is inserting onto the lateral facet. Very easy to remember and here the diagram again with all the different tendons and this is how it looks on MRI. These little ears here resemble a Batman. Because I'm Batman. So enjoy it. Batman out. If you rotate it now so we can see the posterior view of the greater trochanter, we can see the posterior facet in red, the supraposterior facet in brighter green and in dark green parts of the lateral facet. This is the insertion of the gluteus medius tendons, both here and nothing inserts onto the posterior facet, actually. And then here, just a diagram with the different tendons, the lateral portion and the supraposterior portion. And then we have the image from the MR here. I haven't talked about the bald spot yet, and we will see that later if I show you the MR images. But actually, there is a spot on the greater trochanter uh, on the lateral facet where nothing inserts. And this is key to understand that you don't have to deal with some kind of a partial pair of the lateral tendon of the gluteus medius. They also have a nice diagram here in this article and you can see it's similar to what I have already shown you so far. We have the gluteus minimus here yeah. with the broader and the, uh, smart, uh, the broader and the thinner insertion here. We have here the insertion of the lateral portion of the gluteus medius tendon and onto the supraposterior facet, the supraposterior portion of the gluteus medius tendon. And in between or here also we have the bald spot where nothing is inserting. So keep that in mind. Now let's start with the gluteus minimus tendon. Here we have the muscle belly and if you follow it down then you will see that the tendon is forming here. And we can see the tendon here inserting onto the anterior facet here with a little broader insertion down here. And as we go up, it's a little bit less broad. This boomerang shape, 
that I have shown you initially. So this is the gluteus minimus tendon. You can also see it on coronal images here. We have the muscle here coming down. This is the tendon increasing in thickness and then here inserting onto the anterior facet. Another very good way to see the tendon is the sagittal view here and we can see here the muscle belly and then it's coming all together here into the tendon and it's inserting here onto the anterior facet here of the greater trochanter and we can already see the gluteus major tendon, the supraposterior portion here, and if we go even further laterally, then we start to see the lateral gluteal tendon, or the lateral portion of the gluteus medius tendon. Now let's do the same with the gluteus medius. So we have here the muscle, and already here you can see central portions of the tendon, and then here forming this thick, strong tendon is the supraposterior portion of the gluteus medius tendon, inserting here into the supraposterior facet, going up again, this is the tendon here, and the anterior portions here forming this lateral sheet of tendon, here inserting onto the lateral facet. The lateral portion is better visible on the coronals. If you go all the way to the back, you start to see the supraposterior facet, and there you have the supraposterior portion of the gluteus medius tendon, now if we go anteriorly, you will see that the tendon is swinging a little bit to the lateral side and inserting here now onto the lateral facet. So this is the lateral portion of the gluteus medius tendon. And here, between the piriformis tendon and this lateral portion, we have this little bare spot or bald spot rather, where nothing is inserting. So this is a normal finding and should not be mistaken as a tear. And if you go even further anteriorly, again, we are at the level of the gluteus minimus tendon. The sagittal view is also very helpful, especially for the assessment of the supraposterior portion here. You can see this normal signal intensity here, supraposterior facet. If we go further laterally this way, then the lateral portion is not easy to see here on these sequences. As I have shown you with the video about the surgical approaches, you will now understand why and which tendon is damaged depending on the surgical approach. You can go and have a look at the video in your upper right corner of the screen right now. So this is just another patient to show you the same thing on the axials again. It's a young patient and you can see the strong muscle here forming this really nice tendon inserting onto the anterior facet. Going up and here the gluteus medius tendon with the supraposterior portion inserting onto the supraposterior facet and the lateral tendon portion here inserting onto the lateral facet and in between we have this bald spot and here is the piriformis tendon. Go all the way to the back and then you can see the supraposterior portion of the gluteus medius tendon. If you go anteriorly then you start to see the lateral portion here and if you go even further anteriorly you start to see the gluteus minimus tendon here. On the axials, it's basically just the same thing as on your T1-weighted sequences. You have the tendon here inserting onto the anterior facet and here the two portions of the gluteus medius tendon. I'd like to take a minute here and say thanks a lot to my newest patron, Patrick. Hi Patrick. Patrick is the first pioneer patron that I have and as a pioneer patron um, he has several perks uh, such as he gets a free copy of my book Speed and uh, it's already on the way Patrick by the way and several other perks and you can go and check the perks out if you want to become a pioneer patron as well but thanks a lot also to all my other patrons for their continuing support you find them listed here if you want to become a patron yourself go check the link in the description down below and hopefully I see you there soon so if you want to know more about these different facets and the anatomy etc then I have a very, very nice uh, publication here for you guys by Professor Pfirman, uh, one of my mentors, and it's quite an old paper, so it was published in Radiology in 2001, so this is really ancient stuff here. And you can see they have all these nice illustrations that I used as a reference for my figures, and they go into more detail with the different uh, insertions and stuff like that. They have really some nice high resolution images as well, and also anatomical correlation here, so it's worth having a look there. 
That's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching and see you next week.